What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Proton AOSP or the project Zephyrus ROM based on Android 12 and this is the 10th March 2022 build of this ROM and this one includes the G apps in the build itself and this ROM is based on OSS vendor and infinity kernel as you are noticing and this is actually requiring the A11 or Android 11 firmware which is pretty normal for all the Android 12 ROMs as of right now. And if you don't know how to flash this ROM on your device you can check out the cards or the description you will find the how to flash guide over there. This ROM also supports F2FS if you are on F2FS storage or if your storage is formatted to F2FS that will work super fine but I don't have F2FS storage right now but it's still booted it took a lot of time like for almost 10 minutes it was stuck in the boot animation so yeah if you are not on F2FS it may take a lot of time to boot but yeah it does boot eventually but I have normal ext4 storage and this is actually working fine for me and this is how the android version section looks like and we have the z kind of logo because this is project Zephyrus and we have the android version as android 12 of course and if you make this clock to 12 o'clock you will see the easter egg just like this let me go back from here the security batch is still of february 5th 2022 and the project Zephyrus shows as the 12.4.1 version over here and the stock kernel is the 4.14 infinity kernel and here is the build number now in this about section i have seen one thing like here it actually does this kind of lag if you're noticing this i'm not really sure in this 30 fps video if you might notice that but yeah this kind of this android version section is actually lagging when i'm scrolling but once i'm in the normal settings as you can see it doesn't lag the scrolling is completely smooth and fine so yeah in the about section it this might actually lag for you too but here this is actually lagging but i'm not on the f2fs storage partition i have ext4 storage over here that might be the cause too but i'm not really sure for me in the about section it's kind of lagging and it has the pixel launcher by default let me actually go into the settings and you can go into the suggestions and yes you can disable the suggestions if you want to let me go back from here and double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is not present if i'm double tapping it doesn't do anything and double tap to sleep on the status bar is there and that is actually working fine and if you tap the fingerprint scanner this is how it unlocks and let me show you one more thing by just enabling the always on display right now if i double tap this is how the always on display looks like and if i tap the fingerprint scanner again it unlocks very fast and snappy way and let me try one more time so here yeah, just notice how fast the fingerprint scanner speed is I just tap the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks right away and even from the always on display as you can see double tap to sleep and double tap to wake both are working fine so yeah everything is working fine regarding the always on display it also has face unlock let me actually show you that i have already set up my face data and if i swipe up as you can see it shows recognizing face so as you can see it did take a lot of time but it did unlock let me try one more time with the face unlock So yeah, right now, as you are noticing, this is how the face unlock speed is. And yeah, it is working fine. But of course, face unlock with the motorized camera, it takes a lot of time. So yeah, fingerprint scanner works 100% of the time. No issues with that. Also talking about the stock camera, this is how the stock camera looks like. It has this old kind of Google camera. And yeah, I don't like this. This is a very basic kind of camera UI. That's why I have installed the Google cameras. And this is the Unix version of the Google camera that is actually working fine. This is the version 2.6, the latest one. And with that, the 2x telephoto lens is working perfectly fine. And even the 0.6x or wide angle lens, as you are noticing, is working fine. And even the main camera, of course, that is working fine. No issues with the main camera or any other camera. Even the front camera, as you are noticing, is working fine. By the way, I'm shooting this video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And here, if I go into the night sight mode, even that should be working perfectly great. No issues whatsoever with that. Even portrait mode, I have tested, it is working fine. So this Gcam Unix version is working great. No issues over here. Now again, I missed the launcher kind of stuff. So to the left of the home screen, you do get the Google's Discover page. And you can actually swipe over here to get more stories as you are noticing. And scrolling between them is not a problem. It works great. And of course, you can swipe it down even more to actually get a lot of like more quick toggles that is working perfectly fine and swiping up gets you to the app drawer of course and you can search for any particular app that should be working totally fine now talking about the quick setting panel we do have these kind of toggles and you can edit and add even more toggles we have the de-slimming and the high brightness mode i will add them 
I have the Bluetooth flashlight auto rotate and the battery saver, the dark theme and the screen recorder as well. So you can record the device audio and the microphone audio both at the same time with the screen recorder. Also, let me show you more stuff like from here, we have the always on display toggling option. Then we have the hotspot, do not disturb, etc. Night light and stuff. Those are working great. And the Google Home kind of controls is there. Let me go to the next one. We have the reboot toggle over here. So you can directly reboot to the recovery by just pressing and holding on this kind of recovery toggle. Okay, so this is just toggling the do not disturb mode and the volume panel stuff is there. So if you tap on it, you get this volume panel and the disturbing is right now toggled on. So that's why you might see no stutters or flickers over here. And the high brightness mode also works. If you're noticing, it makes the display too bright. Also, there is the auto brightness toggle. You can toggle it off or on from here and you can go directly into the settings panel from here. And this is how the settings panel looks like. But let me tell you, there is no separate customization panel for this ROM for some reason, but you will find customizations in each settings, which I'll show you right now. So the first thing in the network and internet, you will find this Wi-Fi kind of toggle. Of course, you can switch networks. And if you scroll down more, we have the adaptive connectivity then the small mobile data type icons and the combined signal icons. 4G icon enabling option is there. If you are using a SIM card, of course, those will work fine. Also, volatile calling should be working great. No issues with that. And we have the roaming indicator, the view Wi-Fi override, then the VOLT icon and the select VOLT HD icon options are there. And the view Wi-Fi icon you can also enable from right here. Let me go back and we have these connected apps. This is normal. And in the app section, if you scroll down more, we have the assistant settings, then the game settings also. We have the game dashboard and the do not desktop for games and stuff. Those are working great. And we have the screen time too. So you can see which app used the most screen time. Let me go back from here. We have the notifications. And in here, we have the conversation, the bubbles of Android 12, of course. And if we scroll down more, we have the notification count and the annoying notification stuff. Then the edge lighting, you can also enable and customize it thoroughly from here. Then we also have the notification headers and the heads up option is also there. You can enable it or disable it from here and customize it and make heads up less annoying option is also there. And then we have these hide silent notifications in status bar then the notification snoozing, blink light, etc. options. Let me go back to the battery settings. This is how it looks like. And we have the battery percentage right here in bold font, of course. And if you scroll down mode, we have the use old style battery graph. If you want to use that for some reason, but if you tap here, it doesn't do anything as you are noticing. You have to tap this battery usage to actually see the battery usage. And then we have the battery saver and in here you can actually use the battery saver like pretty customized way. And we have the adaptive preference then the idle manager. Also we have the battery estimates and the battery icon styles. So here we get the icon right or left and the circle dotted circle etc. But let me tell you there is no big dotted circle over here or big circle and we have the battery percentage inside or outside you can choose. Then we have the left battery text. So for this percentage text, if you want it to show to the left side, this is how you can adjust it. Let me just toggle it off. And right now let's talk about the battery life a bit. I have been using this Aku battery app. And with that, if you're noticing, if I am scrolling down, the screen on time is actually showing that it's about 10 hours of screen on time. But yeah, you might get about nine or eight to nine hours of screen on time will be a ease on this particular ROM. And the standby time is actually amazing over here. No issues whatsoever with the standby time. If you're noticing the screen off, with the screen off, that simply means it's in standby. So yeah, estimated it will last about 100 hours with standby. So that's just amazing. And with combined nudes, it shows 65 hours. But yeah, it will be lasting for about two days without any issues if you're just not using the device too much. But with even moderate usage, I would say it can give you seven plus hours of screen on time without any issues. Battery life was not an issue on this ROM. And inside health, as you can see, my battery health shows up as 71% or about 2850 mAh right now I have left. So yeah, the, my battery health isn't too great, but yeah, the battery itself is very old as of right now. So yeah, you can recently get seven to eight hours of screen on time without any issues in this particular ROM. And also the fast charging is working great. It doesn't overheat or something. You shouldn't be worrying about those. This ROM is just one of the best ROMs about battery life, I would say. Of course, when you are talking Android 12. Inside sound and vibration, we have the media volume, then the call volume, etc. And by the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. You can expand the panel just like this. And we have the live caption, the adaptive sound, and we have the media kind of stuff, then the ringtone vibration pattern changing option, touch feedback, the dial pad tones, screen locking sound, etc. options are there. 
power app volume control also is there and the vibrate to indicate call status option is there and we have the music visualizer so if you want to enable those visualizers for music you can and we have the me sound enhancer and from here you can choose the presets i have been using it with the youth edition the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well was amazing no issues with that also we have these preset options and we also get the enable hi-fi option so you can choose from all these options for sound and we also have the clear speaker option so if you have some dust in your speaker you can definitely clear it out with this toggle in the display settings we have this monet theme engine if you go into it we have the use black theme turned on so let me actually turn on the dark theme so that i can show you so when you have this black theme turned on this will make the background completely pitch black or amulet black so that will actually save the battery on a amulet display device so right now if i disable it if you are noticing the background have changed to gray so yeah this toggle is amazing and i have been using it with the complete black theme so it looks great and it saves battery so yeah dark theme is 100 percent working great without any issues but for the time being i'll just disable it and we have the custom colors then we have the white luminance and stuff then the use linear lightness etc let me go back we have the adaptive auto brightness then we have the show brightness slider and the quick setting panel and you can definitely customize it if you turn all the toggles it will be there always like for the short quick setting panel as well as for the longer quick setting panel or the expanded one and we have the brightness control too so i can swipe a finger on the status bar to actually adjust the brightness in the lock screen we have the privacy kind of things and we have the fod icon background let me scroll it up and we have the secure quick setting tiles unlocking require and we have the secure power menu and stuff and the show lockdown option show device controls and the music ticker and the always on display scheduling option is also there we have the always show time and info so you are seeing this like amazing amount of customizations are there but it is hidden in the like settings over here in each settings you will find all these customizations and we have the screen timeout right here up to 30 minutes and the dark theme is also there and we have the font size display size dpi etc and we have the night light over here also we have the disable night light when the showing fod option so yeah when you have night light enabled and you are like actually doing the thing which can unlocking it might be helpful inside colors we have this boosted option right here i have enabled that and you can also thoroughly customize the rgb of the screen and that's just amazing and we have the status bar items you can have the headset bluetooth etc icons enabled separately let me scroll down more we have the mic and camera privacy buttons and we have the location privacy indicator colored status bar icons you can enable that material dismiss button for the clearing all the notifications that too is there the font size the icon packs the signal wi-fi etc icons you can actually change from right here as you are noticing a lot of options are there for those and we also have the auto read screen option then the prevent accidental wake up or the pocket detection option double tap to wake is working great as you just saw earlier and the double tap to check phone is also there if you want to enable that wake up on plug is there and the enable wallpaper zoom if you want that you can enable it four small lock screen clock is there but i like the android 12's clock the bigger clock just looks way better in my frank opinion and we have the ambient display option and if you go into it we have the always on and the other toggles and we have the custom display settings where you get the dc dimming and the high brightness mode and yes the dc dimming is working great over here right out of the box right now let me jump into the wallpapers and styles and there in the chain wallpaper section you will find a lot more google kind of wallpapers as you're noticing these are really great dark wallpapers and we have these strange dimensions so these may look great to you so a lot of wallpapers are there that you haven't seen these are the live wallpapers but i tried this live wallpaper but the device is was a little bit lagging so yeah i won't recommend using a live wallpaper on this rom for some reason and we have these elementary wallpapers so yeah a lot of like good options for the wallpapers i would say and they look just amazing if you enable them so yeah a lot of great wallpapers that you get over here right out of the box also we have the color changing option of the accent you can also go with the basic colors if you want to and we have the themed icons and the app grid here we have a lot more like customized options if you're noticing and right now inside security this is how it looks like we have the app security and stuff and if you go into the settings we have the lock after screen timeout and we have the face unlock and the fingerprint now once i put the pin as you're noticing the face unlock it shows face added so I have of course added the face and the fingerprints I have added but I think you cannot really change the fingerprint scanner icons over here and that's just weird because we have seen a lot of fingerprint scanner icons and animations for that but here I don't see those options yet 
so that's how it is even in the advanced settings if you're noticing there is no icons for those so that's how it is as of right now it doesn't offer much icons and stuff but this is the first build of this rom i guess or very early build of this rom so they might be adding the fingbit scanner icons and stuff later on in the system panel this is how it looks like we we have the gboard as the default keyboard we also have the live translate feature if you want that and the pop-up camera settings is also there here we have the camera led disabling or enabling option then we have the front camera raise dialog sound effects are also there but i disabled that and camera calibration is also there if you want to calibrate the camera or if it's stuck over there and we have the gesture settings and here we get plethora of gestures we have the adaptive playback the advanced reboot the quickly open camera the activate torch option and even the system navigation gestures are there if you go to the settings if you scroll down more we do have these gestures nav bar length and the thickness customization or the radius customization and i did customize that that's why you were seeing this pill bar is quite long and thick we also have the full screen gestures with that it will hide the pill bar as well and the haptic feedback option is there you can enable it also we have the invoke assistant option and that is actually working great no issues whatsoever with that we have the two button and three button navigations then we have the swipe deck screenshot and here if i take a screenshot this actually works great we have the share edit capture mode and the delete option so yeah you can actually edit them out however you want to and the one handed mode of course works great here no issues we have the prevent ringing then the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and the status bar kind of double tap to sleep also is there and the music control the volume wake options are there the fingerprint success vibrations options are there and the udfps haptic feedback and stuff is there so those are just haptic feedback things and we do have a system updater so you can check for updates from here if you want to whenever there is a new update it might show up over here so that's it for the settings now let's talk about some basic stuff Talking about the DRM Info, it has L1 certification, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. Talking about Safety Net, it also passes the Safety Net right out of the box, so banking apps are not a problem over here. With that, let's talk about performance. With the daily trading performance and RAM management, I haven't seen any issues. And if you want to look at the benchmarks here, are the Android and Geekbench score of this ROM with the CPU stress test. Also, the recent apps panel looks like this. You can take a screenshot, select some app. And we have the split screen option and stuff and you can go all the way to the left and clear all the apps from right here in the recent panel and it definitely keeps most apps in memory you shouldn't be worrying about the memory management over here so that was it about the proton aosp or the project zephyrus from guys let me know in the comments what do you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdndx signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now